Okay, so we're going to build a geodesic dome. And geodesic domes were pioneered by Buckminster Fuller and others. Uh, just Google either of those things, geodesic dome or Buckminster Fuller, and you'll get a better idea of what's going on here. V3, so it's got three different strut lengths, only the problem with domes like that is you end up using struts with connectors at the end like this. And you would have like, you know, six of these piled up and they would go off in different directions and they would make your conduit struts. This, these are cutoffs. This is, this is what remains of a dome I made some years ago. You bolted all these together to make a dome. But that was a pain in the ass because it took forever to do and it required a lot of just junk. We're going to use panels. So we decided to make a 112 scale drawing. And this was to make sure that we could build the forms. This is going to be a composite dome. It's going to be made out of fiberglass. It'll be panels instead of struts. That way the panels all connect to each other and it's much simpler and easier to put together. This was to make sure that I could get the forms for the fiberglass out of a single sheet of plywood. So first thing we did is we needed to make a model. So at work I cut these out. These are just stainless steel models. Then we traced these onto some foam core and cut them out and then put them together. We made a 112 scale model of the dome we're eventually going to have. Um, this model is kind of wonky because it's been dropped and squished and generally screwed up for a little while. So that's what we're building, but we're going to use fiberglass for each of these panels. Uh, we're going to connect them much the same way we did here. Here we just used some scotch tape on the inside. But what we're actually going to do is because in real life these will be much thinner comparatively, we're going to connect them with Velcro. And that sounds weird, but if you do the math on the Velcro, it'll, it'll take a tremendous snow load, wind load, tear the Velcro to defasten the Velcro if it's applied correctly. And that'll also help make it watertight because we'll be able to put, it'll be a strip of waterproof, UV proof fabric here, Velcro underneath and Velcro underneath the, the fabric. And there'll be weather stripping in here. The strips of fabric will be shingled over one another. So these up here will be over this one here. So when the water comes down, it just slides off the dome like so. How do we make these panels out of fiberglass? Well, we need some kind of form. So what we did is we got some plywood, kind of big, and we glued and screwed a border around it. And what we're going to do is that PVC from the old dome is right here. And what will happen is fiberglass will go in the form, these tubes will go around it, and the fiberglass will lap over this, and then another layer, this will be three layers total, that gives us our panel. The panel comes out, fiberglass comes out, and the wood stays behind. But then we have this recess from the top of the tube to the bottom of the fiberglass. This is one inch PVC, so it's actually about an inch and a quarter. This space in here we can fill with insulation, and then cover that again with some corrugated plastic just pop rooted into the anchor point that the PVC gives us been cutting all the PVC tubing with a miter saw. I've just got a couple of these. This is not bolted down in any way. This is a borrowed saw. Um, so I'm just using some welding clamps I had. A piece of plywood that's just got a stop screw to it. You cut one, then you put it in there like that. Clamp it down where you need it and you cut your lengths. You know, 15 hexagons worth of tube, and there's some more down there, and there's some more over here. That's what 112 scale gets you. This is part one. Uh, thanks for watching. We're going to have part two here soon as I can get some resin and fiberglass.